We're joining you live tonight for my professional property series. We've been doing a few lives for this series, which has been a lot of fun. And it's great to have your engagement through the interview as we welcome all of your comments and questions. So love to see you if you're there. Give us a thumbs up if you're watching so we can see you there. Um, just log into Facebook myself so I can see your questions. So, yeah, as I said, it's great to have your engagement. So here we go. Welcome and thanks for joining us. It's been a crazy time for everyone, um, for all of those with an interest in real estate, especially with the laws changing so often for us in property and with not much real direction around them, I can say. Um, for those of you watching who don't know me, my name is Melanie Dennis. We started Domain & Co 20 years ago to help investors with their rental properties and tenants and to advise people on purchasing and selling homes as property advocates. Property management is my passion, which I'm very involved with still in our business. And for those who know me, they know that we run a very tight ship with loads of systems and procedures, which has really helped in these strange times. As I mentioned, every Thursday, I've been posting an interview for my professional property series. So please jump on my page. Feel free to scroll back as I know there'll be other topics there that will interest you too. Tonight, we have a very special guest, Phoebe, Phoebe Flamey, who runs Clover Financial Solutions and has done for now for 11 years. She's not just a loan broker, but also assists her clients to use management debt solutions to manage their dreams. So Phoebe, why don't I throw it over to you to tell us a bit about yourself? Great, thanks. Hi Mel, hi everyone. Um, I'm Phoebe Blamey. I've got a business called, as Mel said, Clover Financial Solutions, and I've been in the banking and finance world for about 20 years. I really love working with people to help them make good money decisions, particularly around debt. So we build really strong relationships with our clients over the years that quite often see them go from first home buyers, second, first investment properties and second and third. We help their children, their friends, their family to, um, which I love. I think it's a really beautiful way to do business. And we set ourselves apart a bit by taking a really holistic view of our client situation. Um, we really like to get to know our clients so that they can grow their wealth and see what it is, what is actually important to living the life that they want. Yeah, fantastic. Sorry about that voice uh, coming in there, just setting up the uh, Facebook page so I can see who's watching. Um, welcome, Ella and Diana. Um, nice to have you both there. Um, so... What a world we're living in right now. We're all doing really well, as I keep saying, adjusting to our third month um, of COVID-19. But there are lots of questions still going on as the property landscape continues to change. Phoebe, I'm sure you've got clients who are looking to buy a property before all of this happened. What advice are you giving to them now? Is it a good time to buy property? Well, Mel, if people are in the market and in a strong financial position, it appears to be the ideal time to buy properties. So six of my clients have purchased in the last two weeks, um, and which is really, really exciting. And a couple of them have sold as well, and both took the lower end of what they were asking for on their sales, because having their sales finalised was much more important than holding out for the best price, which you would do in a normal market. Now, I know this is anecdotal stuff, but it's stuff that I'm seeing reflected in everything that I'm reading as well. And I think the real estate industry has really adapted well to the changes, particularly around auctions and opens. And it's making the decision to buy for people a lot easier because they're being a lot more selective in what they actually want and what they want to look at. So doing a lot more research potentially before they buy. Um, but yeah, if your long-term strategies investment property and this dip in the market might be just the absolute right time to buy mm, absolutely. Um, yeah yeah that's really good advice um like we often get asked as advocates when is the best time to buy and our answer usually is when you are ready um sophie and sarah thanks for joining us it's great to see you guys there um so as you mentioned, selling's a little tougher right now. So if you are looking to sell, uh, we just want to make sure that you've got all the best advice. And remember that it doesn't necessarily mean someone who wants to sell your property either. With regards to getting finance, Phoebe, how are the lenders assessing loans for properties right now? Well, the lenders have been pretty cautious since the Royal Commission into banking at the beginning of last year. And they're probably a little bit more so now. 
Um, every client that we we have in our pipeline who's pre-approved for a loan now needs to confirm that they're not affected by the COVID-19. Um, I've had a few things, odd things happen, but um, I had a, a lender change the terms of an approval a week before settlement um, and add a couple more conditions. We actually got them to change it because we've got quite good relationships with our lenders. Um, and I wonder what happens when people don't have a broker in their corner that can do that sort of stuff. But most of them, um, yeah, I've heard a couple of the non-traditional lenders have gone back on their approvals and a couple of people have got stuck. So make sure that you're in a really strong position. And if you are affected, talk to your broker almost straight away. Um, the lenders are asking for extraordinarily up-to-date information, which is quite tricky because they're also taking a lot longer than they normally do. Um, but one of the things that's going to affect invest, uh, property investors more than anything is that they normally lenders shade rental income and by that I mean they use about 80% of the income that you would get as rent to service the debt and now they're increasing that shading to um, only use 70% so increasing it from 20 to 30%. Um, most of them aren't taking any holiday rentals, any Airbnb, anything like that anymore. Mm, and fair enough, like, because there's not much of a market there for those well, yeah, at the moment, exactly. is there? <laughs> That's absolutely so true. Um, and they've done the same with dividends, overtime, commissions, because a lot of employers, of course, have cut out overtime and commission. Um, but some are taking JobKeeper, which is really fabulous, because it means that clients can keep going with what they want to do. And yeah, just in general, taking fewer risks, I guess. Yeah, yeah, terrific. Um, Sue says she's watching but having some bad internet, so this will be posted after we have finished the interview, so you can certainly go back and watch it, Sue, if you're interested. Um, great to have you, Maggie and Karen, join us, uh, and Kate, great to see you there. Thank you for joining us. Um, so how easy or how do you go about qualifying for your loan in this market, Phoebe? Um, qualifying for a loan overall is just as easy or hard as it's always been. Um, it's very much dependent on your personal financial situation. So if you're in a strong asset in income position, you're going to qualify. If you've got a more unusual financial situation, there's actually still normally someone out there that's willing to take you on. So if we're able to help, we're pretty good at finding solutions for everyone. There's so many different lenders to choose from, Phoebe. Do you have your favourites? And if you do, like, I guess a favourite child? No, yes. <laughs> Why are you choosing them as your favourite? Look, we absolutely have favourites and I think every broker does. Um, it, uh, My favourites are the ones that I know what they're going to do and how they're going to behave um, because that gives us the best possible outcome for our clients. So. Um, mm. They change a lot because different lenders change their appetite for what they want at different times. Um, but I like a lender with a clear credit policy. Um, I like to be able to talk to the person that's actually looking after the file, um, which is great when you've got something that's just a little bit outside the box. And I like someone with a quick turnaround time. So a lot of the lenders turnaround times are really extended at the moment. Um, a lot of them offshore their staff and there's a lot of lockdowns obviously overseas. So we're, hand, we're pretty much favouring the lenders that are based here and quick turnaround time for our clients at the moment. Yeah, great. Um, and do the different lenders have different rules or are they all pretty much the same? They are vastly different in some, look, in some things they're, they're pretty much the same, but a lot of the time they're vastly different. And one of our big focuses as a business is staying on top of what the lenders are doing all the time to make sure that we're giving our clients the best opportunity to qualify with a particular lender. There's so much more to getting a loan than the interest rate and your ability to pay it back. And main differences are normally around income and what they'll accept around income, self-employed, overtime commissions, dividends, um, but also types of properties, company titles, stratum titles, properties less than 50 square metres. And all of those things are particularly relevant, I think, for people that are looking for apartments as investments. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And some of those villa units as well are under those company shares. Yes. Yeah. Looking after landlords' investment properties, we're probably finding that around about sort of 5 to 10% are currently suffering from a true extreme financial hardship at the moment. Um, and as time has gone on, this is obviously getting closer to the 10% mark. We're predicting this will sit around the 10% mark to line up with unexpected employment rates. Um, 
If I'm a property investor, what do I do if my tenant doesn't pay rent? Okay, I get this question every day and some people are still in a position where they can keep making the repayments, but obvi obviously a lot aren't and so much can change in a really short time. So if you're a proper property investor and you're experiencing real financial hardship, the best thing to do is contact the lender and see what options are available to you. We've got a list of lenders, general terms and contacts on our website, which is on our blog, um, www.cloverfinancial.com.au. Um, and just hit our blog and it's all there. Um, true financial hardship can be more than just a loss of income. And the other thing is that um, if there's money in offset and money in redraw, um, the lenders are gonna expect you to use that first. So you've probably seen ME Bank on the media this week. They can do that. Um, it's part of the terms and conditions of most people's loan. So really read carefully if you're gonna apply for financial hardship. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty simple. It's taking a couple of weeks, but it's, it's a pretty straightforward process. Yeah, and I'll pop your um, blog link into the information on the Facebook post as well so anyone can click yeah. onto that. Um, Jack, thanks for watching. Elodie, they're watching it, which is great. Um, Ella and Elise too. Christy, Karen, thanks for joining us. Um, Maggie's also mentioned that she's learning a lot, which is terrific. And as I said um, at the start, please feel free to ask any questions throughout the chat because we're more than happy to help you either tonight or, or into the future. You can always pop a question in and we'll, we'll sort it out for you. Um, I guess to add into, you know, around the tenants not paying rent, it's really important to have super tight systems and procedures around the hardship, whether you're managing your property yourself. Um, God forbid in these times, I, I, I say, like, I guess God forbid any time for you to manage your own investment property, always good to leave it up to the pressure. But particularly in this time, and also we've got a lot of Residential Tenancies Act change changes coming up this year as well. Um, it's important to recognise we're all in the same storm, but just in different boats is uh, my favourite saying at the moment. Lots of people are saying we're on the same boat. We're certainly not all in the same boat, but certainly weathering the same storm. Just because a tenant reports hardship doesn't mean that the rents should be dropped straight away. Um, there needs to be evidence, and I'm more than happy to discuss this on an individual basis with any landlord or tenants that are listening to us right now. Keep in mind that a tenant cannot just not pay their rent. Um, we had a question come in from Keith who asked about that. So Keith, I uh, hope that's answered your question. Um, but, you know, as I said, I'm open to chatting with either landlord or tenants about it if they're not sure what's going on for their situation. So just send me a message and I'll get in touch with you tomorrow to go over your options. So back to rents lowering for hardship or landlords suffering hardship themselves. Should people with mortgages, Phoebe, go to the bank and put their repayments on hold? Okay, so there's a couple of things before you do that that you need to understand. Putting your repayments on hold, you, you can do at the moment. It's not going to affect your credit score, which is very important, um, unless you've had problems previously. So make sure that you understand the implications of that. Um, your interest in most cases is still going to be calculated daily and charged onto your loan account. So this means you might be paying interest on your interest. Um, so your interest will be compounding. Lenders are offer, offering as well clients to get into very low fixed rates as, a, as an alternative to putting their repayments on hold. Be careful about that because there's a lot of restrictions around having a fixed rate loans and you need to understand what it means as far as early repayment costs, the inability to use offset um, with most lenders and that fixing your rate can be a bit like betting against the house. So make sure that you remember when you're dealing with the bank, the banks are a business and their primary objective is shareholder value. So when they're offering you something, be very clear on what the terms and conditions are. They're varying quite a lot from bank to bank. And like Mel said, I'm the same. Please come to me and ask me any questions. We're very across, because we've got clients across most of the lenders, very across what's going on with most of the lenders. And if we're not, we know how to find out. Awesome. So if someone wants to put their mortgage on hold and haven't done so already, how do they go about doing this? Every lender has it on their website. So you can click onto the website, find the inquiring about putting your um, loans on hold. You will then receive a phone call from the lender 
the lender will then discuss your personal financial situation, make a judgment and um, and assist you. If you have any difficulty with any of that, please contact us. If you're not sure what to ask, just they're the main questions. Will my interest be compounding? Will this affect my credit score? Is there anything else that I need to know about this? What do you think about the concept of putting your mortgage on hold, Phoebe? Do you think it's a good thing to do? Um, I think some people can't help it at the moment. So if, if you're really in that financial situation where you're stuck, then by all means. But I think in most cases, probably don't, um, unless you really need to, because you're paying that loan back. And that's the, that's the goal. Um, yeah. It's the, the, yeah. That's probably it. Yeah. Um, so speaking to a lot of people, they're under the impression that interest um, is not being added to their loan. Well, I know. <laughs> I get that question all the time. And I really need to stress here, banks are a business. They're not a charity. Um, you are absolutely going to be paying interest while your repayments are on hold. It's just you're not making any repayments. Um, the interest is compounding and most lenders also won't extend the term once the um, once the period of hardship or period of putting repayments on hold is finished. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lisa, Peter, Brad, Robin, Liz, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Phoebe, can you explain to us compounding interest? What does that mean? Okay, it means the interest that... Um, Compounding interest is where interest charged to your loan, which happens normally, and then charged again the next month. So while your repayments are on hold, it's charged, charged again the next month. You're not making a payment, so you're effectively paying interest on your interest. Um, we highly, you know, mm. highly recommend it when you're saving money, but not so great when you're borrowing. So for example, if your interest rate's 3% at the moment, um, you'll be paying interest of $254 in your first, on your first month um, on every 100000 that you've got borrowed. The next month it had increased to 100254 100, and the interest payable will be $255. So every month it'll go up on each 100000 by a dollar. It doesn't seem like a lot of money, but, you know, you might be borrowing more than 100000 yeah. as well. So, yeah, have, make sure you understand that that's... Yeah, I'm paying interest happen. on your interest doesn't sound like a... It's not yeah. ideal. No, paying interest on your interest doesn't sound like um, something that anybody would like to do. So while the banks are reporting a loss, they're not really getting a loss there, are they? No. Not yeah, really. interesting. Um, so what sort of questions should be you be asking of your bank? Um, what do people need to be aware of when, when doing this sort of thing? So not every bank is allowing the interest to, comp bank, uh, to compound. So um, question one, is my interest compounding when I put my repayments on hold? Um, or am I just being charged interest on what was the principal amount to start with? Um, will this affect my overall credit score in any way? Be very clear on that. Because like I said, there are some terms and conditions in not having that affect your credit score. Um, will it affect your internal credit score with the bank? So if you put your repayments on hold, if you're with say ANZ and you put your repayments on hold, is it gonna affect any future borrowings you might wanna do with that particular financial institution? Um, how long will you be allowed to continue the financial hardship? Some are offering three months and then a review. Some are offering six months and then a review. Um, what will the reviews involve? And um, ask anyway, um, most are saying no. Will they extend the loan term if the payments are on hold for six months? But most mm -hmm. Terrific. Um, Ellen has asked a question, which she, she says, I hope makes sense. So let's see how we go with it. If a tenant is on hardship, so the landlord needs to put payments on hold and the interest is therefore compounding, will the tenant's rent go up afterwards as the landlord will be paying more on their mortgage? I think that makes sense. So tenant's rents can't go up until the 29th of September. It's not super clear whether uh, we can't give a notice before the 29th of September or whether the rents can't actually increase on the 29th of September. We're hoping we get clarity over that soon. Um, rents can only really increase as a market increases, Elodie. So if all of this 
you know, when, when all of this, not if, when all of this finishes um, and we come out of COVID-19, if the market doesn't allow the property that you're renting to increase, then it can't really increase. If the landlord increases it, there's options that you can do to go to consumer affairs to um, reject the increase and they will do investigations into it or or you can, can move out and find another property obviously as well. But if the market's not there for an increase, a landlord would be pretty crazy to increase it because it just means they're not potentially having a tenant and not being able to get that rent on the open market in any case. So really whatever a a bank's charging for interest versus what they're charging for rent. There's there's no real correlation in it unless the market's moving in the same direction. So I hope that has answered and that's sort of that where you were coming from with that questionality. Um, so there hasn't been a lot of questions tonight. So we've pretty much covered off on everything, which is fantastic. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Phoebe. I really appreciate it. I know it's late on a Thursday. Um, sometimes I think, oh, what have I done starting this professional property series at eight o'clock at night? But it's been really great to have you along. And as I mentioned earlier, there's lots of back um, interviews. That I've done from you know lawyers to our else to if you do have any other thoughts around what you would like to see on our professional property series who you'd like me to interview topics you'd like to see me cover really love to hear from you um, I'd like to keep the lives going through the COVID-19 period until I can get back in front with people um, and, um, and good night good night thank you so much Mel Thank you for watching another one of my professional property series interviews. I'd love to see your comments and please like and subscribe to my social channels on Facebook and YouTube. I welcome any suggestions for new topics too.